Good morning. I'm Chris Ekman. I lead the Autonomous Robotics and Perception Group. Um, thanks, Eric, for giving the introduction to autonomy. And I uh, was really glad to see that we have a bunch of computer science professors that are giving some talks today on robotics. Although we have a lot of folks in aerospace and mechanical that do a lot of work in this area as well, many of which, uh, many of whom I collaborate with, including Eric. Um, so I get to talk a little bit about what goes on in my group today. Um, here's my group uh, as of about a year ago. Our group has grown by about four students since then. So we have eight PhD students right now. Uh, many of them are going to be on the job market. They're constantly growing. And so if you want to talk to me about some of my students, I'm happy to do that and tell you exactly what they do. Um, but most of what my group focuses on is robotic autonomy and perception. And so what this uh, includes, is this giving us feedback? Is it okay? Uh, it sounds terrible up here. So. As far as uh, perception goes, this, as Eric mentioned, is not only related to robotic perception, although the algorithms, are really, they, they work on robotic and autonomous platforms. Um, the same goes for situational awareness, head-mounted displays, augmented reality, virtual reality. Many of, many, many of my collaborators use the technology we build on those kinds of platforms. But what I focus on is the field robotic aspect. So I actually build the robots with my students and deploy them in different kinds of uh, environments. Um, they tend to be low-cost, robust perception types of solutions, um, and we operate underground in automated agriculture as well as indoors, focusing on this GPS-denied sort of capability. Uh, we, we also are interested in human-directable lifelong learning through natural language interactions through collaborations. And so I'm going to show you a couple of videos. Uh, this is a little schematic or picture of the, the car that we, we use in many of our prototyping applications from agile ground vehicle control to perception in challenging environments like low light right here. Um, as you can see, this is a, this is a headlight or a headlamp um, with a couple of different sensors, mostly focusing on vision. And um, here's the car driving around in this low light environment and we're still able to do perception despite it being really challenging. Um, that being that we only have a very narrow field of view associated with where we're driving. And in this, uh, here's us under the steam tunnels at CU Boulder here, uh, running this same perception stack. And essentially what's going on here is a visual front end that's collecting a bunch of information about visual landmarks. We're, we're calculating visual autometric measurements from that and fusing in inertial measurements as well as wheel encoders and other kinds of sensors. And I get to talk about that in just a second. Um, this kind of technology is being deployed directly to the DARPA subterranean challenge that Eric just mentioned. DARPA Subterranean Challenge is a deployment of a multi-robot system in GPS-denied environments with communication limitations in order for us to do exploration and artifact detection. It's a very exciting program. Uh, so we're immediately, I mean, we've been in the mine a couple of times uh, up in Idaho Springs. Next week or two weeks from now, we get to meet with DARPA down in Golden to go and do a deployment with six other teams across the, across the world, actually, coming in from Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic, sorry. Um, and, uh, and also from Carnegie Mellon, MIT, JPL, in order to basically go head to head and see what our, what our technology can do. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we're interested in this large scale, long-term simultaneous localization mapping problem using sensor fusion, Bayesian estimation techniques, and more or less cheaper sensors. So cameras, IMUs, millimeter wave radar, which we've been building our own sensors in because that's a relatively new technology. Um, and uh, visual inertial navigation for rapid feedback. Uh, in, in part of that is including the guidance, and nav guidance navigation control stack through model predictive control. Um, as a sort of more AI application, we're also doing natural language and semantic perception. That's the ability for us to do navigation based on what we would all see in this environment, um, things that could move and things that don't move around that much, as well as deep learning and perception action loops. So here's a little video of us sort of doing this visual inertial perception in a hallway and uh, trying to recreate a pose graph. You can even see the steps that the operator was taking here. Collaborations that we have, as I mentioned before, Sean Humbert, Eric Fru, Nicholas Carell, and Mark Rentschler. This is from a collection of different departments in machine learning, Brad Hayes, Alessandro Roncone, and Martha Palmer. We have many different sponsors, DARPA, NSF, DOD, NASA, and different industrial partners. Happy to talk more about that if you like, as well as um, finally what our impact is. Here's a picture of all of our previous and current sponsors. Um, not all of them, just a subset actually. And so what, we're, what we believe we have impact in is ubiquitous perception, natural language interactions, being able to direct robots using natural language. And finally, um, uh, hopefully uh, being able to deploy autonomy in many applications, which include safety critical operation, dangerous environments. So happy to talk at the break. Thanks for listening.